Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about why I believe that Bitcoin is going to $100,000 next year in 2020. These are my price targets for Bitcoin. This isn't a scam. I'm going to show you the math behind these predictions. If you're interested in Bitcoin, crypto in general, or just want to see what I'm buying and selling, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So today Bitcoin trades around $10,000 per Bitcoin. These targets call for Bitcoin to be $100,000 by 2020, by the end of 2020, and somewhere between $400,000 and a million dollars per Bitcoin in just four years from then. So let's dig down into some, into some of the math here. Uh, Bitcoin is the first scarce digital asset that we've ever seen. And as a result, Normally with digital assets, it's really easy to make copies of them. You can make unlimited copies of a PDF or an email or an image online, but this is a scarce, a scarce digital asset. There are only going to be 21 million Bitcoins ever made. Now, how do, we, how do we measure the value of a scarce asset? Well, I've come across an interesting paper, which I'm going to reference in the description notes below. One way to reference them is by using this concept of stock to flow. Now, this is actually going to get really interesting, so bear with me when I go through a little bit of math here. Stock to flow is just a measurement of how much stuff we have of something divided by how much, divided by the, 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 the yearly production of it. So, for example, if we're looking at gold, we take how much gold we have above ground and then divide it by how much gold is currently being produced every year, how much is being mined. So, gold has a stock to flow of 62. Another way of thinking about this is it takes it would take 62 years at current rates to mine as much gold as we currently have worldwide above ground. Gold has a stock to flow of 62. Silver has a stock to flow of 22. These are large stock to flows. Now metals, even rare metals like palladium and platinum, they have much lower stock to flows. In other words, in one year you can produce as much palladium you can mine as much palladium as we currently have in the world. And this causes huge, uh, huge spikes and huge crashes. But it's, it's, the, uh, it's the assets that have very high stock to flow numbers that behave much more like money and that, that can function very well like a, uh, like a store, like a good store of value. And that's why gold and silver historically, especially gold, have been, um, have been used as money across many different civilizations. Now, it turns out that the stock to flow of an asset is correlated with the market value of that asset. So a higher stock to flow means that asset is worth a lot more. And there's a very strong st statistical significance to this, a very high R squared. So the gold stock to flow, as we said, is 62. It currently has a total value of 7.7 .7 trillion. So let's go in and look at what the stock to flow of Bitcoin is right now as a way of of uh, valuing it. So there are only going to be 21 million Bitcoins made. There will, there will never be any more made. And that's we're going to we're going to finish mining them in a few years from now. But basically right now there are about 17.9 million Bitcoins that have been mined. We're mining about uh, 1800 new Bitcoins per day. So all we do is we take the new the number of Bitcoins produced in a year. So 1800 times 365 and divide that into 17.9 million, we get a stock to flow Bitcoin of about 27. Now, the, this, the paper I'm using, I'll link it in the notes below, Modeling Bitcoin's Value with Scarcity. This guy is a very, very smart guy. So I'll, I'll, I'll stick a link to this below. But basically, when, when you come up with a stock to flow of 27, it implies a, uh, a price of Bitcoin right around right around 10,000, which is where Bitcoin is trading right now. Now, what's going to happen to the, to the uh, stock to flow going forward? What, what happens is there's something built into the Bitcoin code where every 210,000 blocks that are mined, which takes about four years, so every four years, the reward that goes to the people, to the machines that mine Bitcoin, gets halved. You've probably heard about halving. Uh, and this happens roughly every four years. It's scheduled to happen next in May of 2020. And what this means is that's going to cut the new production of Bitcoin, the new mining of Bitcoin in half. And what that's going to do, that's going to double the stock to flow number. So when the Bitcoin stock to flow number goes from 27 to 54, according to this model, the value of Bitcoin 
uh, it's a power loss, so it goes up by much more than just doubly. Power, the value of Bitcoin should go up eight to 10x. Roughly call it, uh, this is five to 10x, but call it 50,000 to 100,000 uh, per Bitcoin. And then there'll be another halving, another halving in the reward for Bitcoin miners in 2024. This implies a valuation of Bitcoin, each Bitcoin being worth 400,000 to a million dollars per Bitcoin. Now, there's something else that's going on at the same time as we're expected this, this halving next year, and that is the uh, printing more money, printing more money. So there's a very good, there are a lot of signs that the world economy is slowing. We have an inverted yield curve, uh, flat to inverted yield curve in the U.S. right now. And what this implies is that uh, the Fed's going to have to continue to cut interest rates and it's going to have to continue to print money. Famous Ben Bernanke quote, U.S. government has a technology called a printing press, which allows it to produce as many dollars as it wishes at essentially no cost. There's been some uh, chaos in the repo market lately that also some people argue is a sign that the Fed needs to start printing money and start more what's called quantitative easing, which is essentially uh, printing money. Now, what, what happens when you print money? Well, the value of the dollar goes down and the value of scarce assets that have a finite supply, such as gold um, and Bitcoin, go up. This is one reason we've been seeing a huge spike in gold prices. This is starting to get priced into gold. And so we have a very interesting confluence of events here where we have this Bitcoin halving that's coming in May of 2020. We have a lot more quantitative easing worldwide and in the U.S. coming in 2020. And it's basically it's basically already starting up here in, in the U.S. What this implies, these two things taken together provide the catalyst as well as the, the price targets for much, much higher Bitcoin prices. So Bitcoin here, it's an opportunity to make 5, 10, 50, even 100 times on your money. If you buy one Bitcoin here at about 10,000, uh, if this all plays out according to the model, each Bitcoin could be worth a million dollars in 2024. So that's a, that's a hundred X on your money. It's turning $10,000 into, into a million dollars. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, Bitcoin is, this is, this is a play that does have some risk. It could be, uh, Bitcoin could be uh, banned by the U S government. It could be hacked, though I think the odds of it being hacked are, are extremely low. It's, it's proven to be very robust, and it's, it's survived for the last 10 years. It survived many, many hacking attempts. And the longer it survives, according to the Lindy effect, sort of the stronger and more robust it gets. So I think this is one of the best investments available out there. If you're interested in following more about what I'm doing with Bitcoin and crypto, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you have any comments or questions, I'd be really interested in them. Drop them in the notes below. And um, make sure you hit that like button too if you found this helpful. Thanks a lot for listening and I'll see you in the next video.